الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ وسلۃ وسلام علی خاتم المبیا دی منت آف رمضان از اے منتھ آف بلیسنگس اٹ از آلسو اے منتھ ان وچ اے کلچر آف نالج وا اسٹیبلشڈ بائی دا پروفٹ پیس بی اپن ہیم دی فرسٹ ریولیشن دیٹ کیم سیڈ اقرا بسم ربک الزی خلق خاق انسان من الق اقرا اور بک اکرم الزی اللہ بالقلم علم الانسان معلم یعلم دیز فائیو شارٹ اسٹیٹمنٹس آف سورہ العلق ٹیلس دیٹ دا ویری فرسٹ انسٹرکشن واز دیٹ ریڈ اور ریسائٹ ان دا نیم آف اللہ ریڈنگ اینڈ ریسائٹنگ آر ٹو نون میتھڈس آف نالج اینڈ لرننگ it reminded the prophet peace be upon him and all who follow him that islam wants culture of knowledge not of ignorance islam brings knowledge enlightenment and light not following blindly in the customs of others unfortunately what we call modernity today this modernity is essentially a result of that uh, rebellion which took place in European history against their faith or religion. Liberalism, secularism, modernism, all were reaction to the rigid approach of institutional religion in Europe. Islam from day one encourages knowledge, learning and reading. It does not confine reading of the Quran to a few people. It does not say a clergy will do it and will tell you what it is. It said this is the book of guidance for the whole of mankind and humanity. Therefore, every human being has been invited to approach the book and understand. Therefore, it said, Iqra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq. Then it said, read. because your lord your rab is extremely kind and generous he made you from a clot which means conduct research how biologically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made human being how one clot one congealed clot of blood turns into a genetic beginning of human beings and how this fetus becomes ultimately a whole human being. This aspect of this very first revelation was an eye-opener for whole of humanity. Invitation to research, investigation and trying to find out what is the origin of man and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made human being in most perfect form. Because the Quran said, we have created man in ahsan taqweem in best mold. It was not a matter of trial and error which ultimately resulted into human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned the way he wanted and he was not obliged to go through a process of so-called evolution. He only says kun and things take place. Therefore, The very first revelation tells us about culture of knowledge, reading, reciting and writing with qalam and at the same time trying to find out from our own existence what are the secrets of human being and how these capacities Allah has given us can be utilized for better use of one's own and better benefit of humanity. This culture of knowledge was given by the Quran in several places. Therefore, in somewhere else the Quran said, Indeed, your sama or your audition, your basa, your vision, and your fuad, your heart, for all of them there is a, 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 a check, an accounting, a, 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 a time, when you will be asked for. In this short 
aya which talks about sam'a, basar and fawad, three aspects of knowledge are clearly mentioned. Knowledge comes by listening, knowledge comes by observation, knowledge comes by contemplation, integration of what we see and hear in our heart or mind. In other words, the Quran invites humanity to follow these processes to enhance knowledge, to learn and to find out what is truth. The main purpose of knowledge is seeking truth. The Quran again and again reminds us, invites us to think out of the box and find out what is truth. Can truth be discovered and achieved simply by an empirical methodology, following empirical method of touching an object, measuring an object, weighing an object, trying to find out its surface, is it, is it hard or soft, it is uh, soluble, non-soluble and then come up with a statement about empirical reality. No doubt empirical world is to be explored, but can empiricism provide us ultimate truth? If we are honest enough, we must say no. It can provide us partial information, only that in information which is materially verifiable. Another source of knowledge which has been there for centuries is speculation which we call philosophy. We speculate with logic, with logical thinking and come up with our conclusions. But can any human mind with all possible capabilities cover all aspects of knowledge? If we are realist, we must confess that human mind cannot reach out of its own existence. Human mind has a capacity. Brain cells work and act subject to given conditions. Human brain has portions for memory, for color differentiation, for feelings, for everything. But still human brain is confined in its capacity. And same human mind cannot go beyond its limit. Therefore, it can tell us within its own bounds what is right and wrong. Another source of knowledge which has been quite often relied is intuition, what you feel inside, emotional intelligence. Another one is mystical experience, when people think they have an encounter with something fascinating, something unusual. But can a very personal experience of a mystic which according to him or her takes place with an encounter with reality become the source of guidance for whole of humanity? Can single experience be the basis of making judgment for the whole of human beings? A simple answer is no. Then how we know knowledge? How we get knowledge? The only answer is <coughs> the one who has created knowledge, created universe, created mankind can provide us guidance in what is knowledge. <coughs> we call it revealed knowledge, revelation. The Quran calls itself Wahi min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Wahi means that knowledge which has been given to us by the Creator. Wahi is quite often translated in English as inspiration, which is a very uh, insufficient translation. Inspiration is usually a psychological feeling, an inner experience which tells me what is around me. And I translate my inspiration into my words and feelings. While revelation 
is something external not internal it's objective not subjective it comes without any effort inspiration is linked directly with my involvement when i look on a beautiful scenery a lake a mountain a glacier i am inspired i write poetry i write prose i talk about it revelation is not inspiration it is coming from allah subhanahu wa taala to the prophet peace be upon him through angel jibril or gabriel even when a prophet may not expect a revelation it comes to him and sometimes a prophet may desire an urge for a revelation it may not come to him at all it's not a matter of what a prophet wants or what he desires it's not a matter of how he feels or how he want to receive it it is given to him by the uh, creator of the humanity and mankind allah subhanahu wa taala the way he wants and the time he wants most obvious example is when in madina munawwara some rumors were spread about the family of prophet peace be upon him if such thing happens anywhere in the world the chief executive cannot remain undisturbed chief executive must come forward immediately and have press conference a notification a tv presentation to show all that is said is wrong but here the prophet peace be upon him cannot make that statement unless after several weeks a revelation comes and declares that all those rumors were completely baseless they were a test and trial for muslim community to see how many people believe in rumors and how many people believe in truth therefore revelation is the ultimate source of knowledge when we say this month is a month of culture of knowledge we mean that in this month revelation came and introduced this dimension of truth to humanity humanity earlier was depending either on speculative knowledge of philosophy or on intuitive knowledge or mystical knowledge but revelation overruled all those areas and provided human beings with verifiable truth coming from the source of truth allah subhanahu wa taala the quran consequently remains a speech or kalam of allah subhanahu wa taala which was sent by his uh, uh, blessing and kindness through jibril to the prophet peace be upon him and he conveyed it to his companions as soon as he got a single revelation which was recorded preserved in that way the culture of knowledge was not only introduced but the culture of knowledge was made culture of the future this culture of knowledge replaced the culture of oral tradition into a tradition of writ writing learning and dissemination the quran from day one was written down the quran from day one was uh, available through memory it was from day one spread at global level and therefore became the only book which has no variation fully verified and source of all kind of knowledge all physical knowledge biological knowledge empirical knowledge is subject to revelation because revelation wants us to explore in those areas therefore the culture of knowledge which was given by islam is a unique culture and this month of fasting is privileged to receive that instruction in one or night which became ultimately a source of a new civilization which muslims created at a global level may allah subhanahu wa taala give us energy and time to think more think critically into quran and sunnah and find out guidance for us which is always there till day of judgment wa akhdhamdulillahi rabbil alamin